everyone. Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. My name is Vaughn Marie Moniz. I am an event planner and owner of Lovely Events by Vaughn, where we help you keep calm, stay lovely, and party on. Today we're talking about um, your wedding details that you don't want to forget about. Remembering to do the small little details that, you know, in between all of the, you know, getting your dress, getting your your flowers ready, your girls, your, you know, everything that goes on with the wedding, you might forget some of the small details, um, which is okay. You know, usually that's why um, some couples will go with a planner uh, because I would be in charge of those things. But, um, and the last thing you want to do is stress out while you're trying to get ready to actually attend your wedding. So, um, you know, that's why people usually try to go with a planner, but if you've decided to opt out of a planner, like I said, that's totally fine. Um, just, you know, maybe have someone else kind of check on these things. Um, if your venue has a venue coordinator, then um, see if they're, they're able to do some of these, these things for you. So first thing that you want to do is, and this is kind of depending on the size of your wedding too, and um, if you're having the ceremony and the reception in the same area, um, because you might not need this. But um, directions and signage, if you are having your wedding in a place, it could be in the same, you know, the ceremony and the reception in the same area, but it is a bigger venue, then you want to make sure that you have um, some signage and um, letting them know where to sit, where to go, anything like that. So you want to uh, definitely, definitely, can't talk today, look into that. The, se the second thing is um, the entrance decorations. So you might not think that it's a big deal because, you know, it's people are just going to see it. Your guests are only going to see it when, um, hey, Brad, are you still watching? I um, hope you're doing okay. Anyways, um, so yeah, um, the entrance decoration you want to kind of just like spruce it up a little bit. So maybe hang some garland over there because you have to think about the entrance to your ceremony or to your reception. You have to think about it. It's like a first impression. So if your guests are going from the ceremony that just had this magical, you know, beautiful ceremony, there's joy in the air, happiness, love, then you want to kind of keep, it's like going to Disney World. You want to keep the magic going throughout the whole thing. So... August 25th, that's awesome. Why didn't you hire me? Like, what the hell? No, I'm just kidding. That is great. Um, Brad, definitely shoot me a message if you need any help. I'll be happy to help you guys out if you have any last minute things. So, um, yes, listen, listen up, Brad. Um, so, yeah, so the entrance, you want to keep the magic going. Like I said, kind of like Disney World, so you want to go from the ceremony where everyone's feeling good, everyone's feeling happy, everybody's in love. Um, you want to make, yeah, everybody's in love. It's like, I don't know what kind of wedding that is, but um, just keep the magic going from there into the, um, into the, hey Jasmine, into the uh, reception. I'm getting distracted. This is, this, I'm easily distracted sometimes. But um, decorate the entrance. doesn't have to be anything big. Just, you know, make it look pretty. Kind of go with the theme and go from there. Don't forget your escort cards. So um, people need to know where they're going to sit. Um, you want to make sure that you're putting them in a visible spot. You want to make sure that if you have a vendor or a venue coordinator, make sure that you let them know where you want it. Um, and that it's just visible so that people aren't kind of looking around looking for the place cards and if you don't have one you also want to make let your guests know because then they're expecting to go and find an escort card so make sure that whether you have them or not make sure that um, someone lets everybody know where to look for them or where to just keep going into um, the reception area so um, if there's no assigned seating then you want to also have a sign because like I said, people are going to be looking for their place. So um, have a sign saying, you know, there's no assigned seatings. Please feel free to sit wherever you'd like. Something like that. Or have someone, which, I mean, this could work, but you might want to have a sign. Because it's if you have a lot of guests, then it can get a little crowded. And people aren't going to hear this one person if, they, if you just have one person in the front saying, hey, sit wherever you'd like. So um, just have a sign out there. That's my suggestion. 
Um, and there's nothing wrong with, I mean, you're, you might get your guests that are going to get a little anxious because now they have to figure out where they're going to sit and if they're going to be okay with whoever they're sitting next to. But it's no big deal. It's your wedding. You don't have to have assigned seating. It's great for the couple because you don't have to stress out about where to put everybody. So that works out. Um, number four, your guest book. So um, make it creative, make it fun, um, and don't forget to let people know about it. So for my wedding, I don't have a guest book because um, I had something really creative. I made, um, I got these little um, wooden hearts. I painted them. Um, I had gray ones and I had like a peach color one, which was closest to my, uh, the girl's wedding, uh, bridesmaid's dresses. But um, I did not communicate. This was on my end. It was my fault. I didn't communicate to the um, the venue coordinator. Uh, I just had met her that day, first of all, actually, while I was walking down the aisle. Um, so problem number one, I just met her that day. And I'm, of course, in the middle of freaking out because we were already half an hour behind. Not my fault. Um, but... Nobody signed the hearts that I so took so much time to paint and decorate. And you were supposed to put, you know, sign your names, sign well wishes, whatever, and drop them into a frame kind of thing. So they would kind of like align and it had, it was, it was a great thing, but I don't have it because nobody signed them because nobody knew. So like towards the end, um, we were trying to get people to sign them. So I have a few of them still that um, I want to turn into ornaments and they're just well wishes and people's names and things like that. So um, I got something out of it, but it was sad. So make sure that um, it's visible and that everybody knows where the guest book is and that everybody signs it so that you have a guest book. Number five, lighting. So um, if you're having it outside, then you might want to do something like um, the hanging lights. I'm a big, huge fan of the hanging lights. If you're doing it in a tent, you can still have the lighting in there. You can have some lamps, some candles, um, anything like that. It depends on what your venue allows and um, what they have available. Um, and of course, if you can bring in your own, then that's great too. You can bring in your own hanging lights or whatever it is that you want to put there. Um, if you're doing it inside, then, you know, set the tone with some dim lighting and, um, if you have the, um, oh, what do you call those lights? The DJs have them, the up lighting. If you have that, have, you know, you can set the mood with that as well. So, um, you can get really creative with those menu cards. Make sure that you're either putting them on, you know, the chargers in front of where the people are your guests are going to sit or you can just display one big one in the middle of the table it all depends on what your centerpieces look like and um, if it's going to take up too much space depending on you know the size of the table how many people you have on there but that's a pretty neat idea where you can just kind of just set one up everybody can look at it um, everybody is going to go hungry so they're they want to know what's for dinner even though you did tell them when they were RSVPing um, or you might have not you know, if they're not having an option, but if they're not having an option on what they want to eat, then they definitely want to know what they're eating once they get there because they need to know choices. If um, there's a gluten-free allergy, um, if there's a vegan, a vegetarian, you know, whatever kind of dietary restrictions there are, they're going to want to know that they have some options. So um, make sure that you're displaying that. Uh, number seven, the cake table. So you don't want to have anything extravagant on there because you already have a beautiful cake there that you want people to admire. But you want to have maybe some, um, you can do some candles around it or some flowers, even something simple like your bouquet if you want to set it down, if it's this big bouquet, um, that'll make the table look pretty. So that's totally fine. A lot of, um, I've seen a lot of venues that, We'll grab the bridesmaids bouquets and put them around the cake table or your sweetheart table, whichever one. So um, that's an option too. You don't have to go crazy. Like I said, just kind of decorate the table a little bit um, that, you know, it goes with your um, theme. Number eight, the chairs. So if you don't know my story about my chair covers, um, my mom made me get chair covers. I had her pay for them because I did not want chair covers. But um, there is an exception to the rule because if you have kind of 
um, not so good looking chairs, then you might want to cover them up some way, somehow. Um, so think about looking into, um, you know, when you're going to look at your venues, make sure that you're looking at the chairs closely. Are you going to be okay with not getting them covered? Do you want to get them covered? So just think about your options and um, a game plan for it. Speaking of game plans, um, kids, you need a game plan for kids. So whether you're having it outside in your backyard, um, at a venue, anything like that, you kind of have to have um, an idea of where you want the kids to be because um, take it from me, my kid, um, my mom was supposed to be watching my kid, but uh, that didn't work out so well. So my kid was laying all over the place on the lawn getting her flower girl dress all ruined. I didn't have any kids at the wedding because I didn't want that to happen and yet my child was the one that did that. So um, I only had um, my nephew and of course Olivia. They were three and four at the time I believe and then uh, my niece was a junior bridesmaid. So those were the only kids there. Um, my niece and my nephew actually they didn't stay too long. I think they left after food. Um, so that's another option too. Um, if you want to leave the dancing for the adults, that's fine. Um, and then my kid, of course, I didn't have a sitter. My sitter was at the wedding. So she was there and she photobombed everybody. Um, yeah, I have a photo booth and, uh, she's in almost every picture. So <laughs> that was fun. Um, but yeah, have a game plan for the kids. Have a bouncy house if that's something that you're into, if that's what you want. Um, just... Think about where you want the kids, if they are allowed at the um, reception. Number 10, favors. So you don't have to have favors, but um, if you did go out of your way to buy some favors or to even make some favors, I made all of my own favors, um, make sure that you have someone put them out for you because that's kind of like money going down the drain, especially if you took the time to make them yourself. So um, make sure that you are um, putting them out there, that everybody takes one and... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it on that. Um, the exit. We didn't have an exit. Uh, not a fancy exit. I mean, we just, uh, we waited until everyone left and that was that. That was our exit. We left with everybody. So, um, I've been to a few weddings that that's, that's all they did too. So it's no big deal if you don't have anything fancy planned. But if you want the fairy tale send off, then you need to plan for it. Make sure that you plan for it. Um, make sure that everybody... In your bridal party, everyone that's involved with the wedding, if you have a planner, if you have a the coordinator of the venue, make sure that everybody is aware of what the send-off is going to be. And just make it creative, make it cool, uh, make it something that is uniquely geared towards the two of you. So that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Um, Jasmine, Brad, I think I saw Carla in there, and Crystal. Um, thank you so much. Um, if you have any tips, tricks, suggestions of your own, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And like I said, Brad, please make sure to message me because um, I want to know if I can help you with anything. And that goes for anybody else out there too. I don't mind answering a few questions or helping you guys out. So thanks guys. I will see you all next week. Bye.